awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, he's so. Oh, uh, Matt Letcher looks like he's having the most fun he's ever had uh, across both shows. Yeah, for sure. He was he, and, and Hunter botched and watched the wrong episode. Um, hey, listen, <laughs> listen. I work long hours. And Xbox One, the Xbox One UI for their Xbox video is the most confusing thing I've ever seen. So, yep. Uh, in short, Matt Letcher speechified a whole lot, stole someone's body, uh, and got to run around. Literally got to run around the weight rider, tearing the ship apart, looking for something. So, so when you say stole someone's body, what, so, okay, so whose body did he steal? Marn Stein. Stein. Well, it, it didn't. He even says he says this device used to basically kill you quite dead. He says, but I've modified it, so it'll cause you just a little bit of pain. He says that. He yeah. says that part might be a little bit inaccurate. And then Martin Stein screams until we go to commercial. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was hoping you would say like he like he he fused with like Winston Churchill or something. <laughs> <laughs> like no, like. Um... <laughs> It took me a little while to remember the Harrison Wells origin episode, but after the commercial, I was like, oh, wait, he's done this before. He's changed. I can never before. forget that episode, because that is the darkest moment in season one. Yeah. When he turns into, like, a skeleton I'm gonna, after. I'm going to steal your body and then bury you in the side of the road uh, in a shallow grave like you're fucking a squirrel that I hit with my car. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's a serial killer, basically. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, to me, fucked up. you've been dead for centuries. I do wish that uh, Victor Garber had done like a Matt Lesher impression, because that the idea of that sounds funny to me. Because um, <laughs> Lesher does have his very specific way of speaking, and so does Victor Garber. So those two things meshed. Uh, but yeah, I liked I liked his performance as Reverse Flash. It was a uh, Oh, he was so much. He was so fun. Um, yeah. In the opening, when he takes out a bunch of uh, Capone, yeah, this this is an Al Capone episode too, Hunter. Um, was, what? Yeah, yeah, uh, dude. Wrong episode. It was in Chicago, and uh, Damian Dark and Reverse Flash basically pal up with Al Capone, uh, yeah. and they bring in Malcolm. Mark, like, yeah, oh. yeah, and then like lots of shenanigans go down. <laughs> Honestly, I think this is the worst Al Capone I've ever seen. Oh, he's um, terrible. <laughs> That's yeah. the point. But if you've seen Boardwalk Empire, any Al Capone is terrible. Yeah, exactly. So, also, uh, the um, the Citizen Steel Adam romance has oh, yeah. gotten to a wonderful point. Yeah, I love it. They're, I love. I mean, Katie Lotz described it so well. They are like two little boys just <laughs> arguing, arguing over the same toys. It's just it's so great, and I love it. That night, when uh, Susan Steele was uh, pretending to be Elliot Ness, and he's like, this is my partner, Bob De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty funny. There's even uh, a moment... Uh, I'll have to watch this episode. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. There's even a moment where, like, the score of this episode calls back to the untouchables. It's like a very quick thing. But I was like, "Oh wow, they did that." That's yeah. That's this fun. I was mentioning before uh, we started this thing holding rolling that were uh, like mo- the score for the show. This episode was awesome, and uh, I think I noticed that and like just the re- the return of all the reverse flash um, uh, cues was awesome. Yeah, hmm. yeah, and uh, so I I don't like the Captain Gold fake out. I didn't... I don't either, because it's the second one we've had. Mm-hmm. And, um... I get it. They're trying to tease us, and they're trying... And they can't use them that much. Like, I don't know how long Prison Break has been in production, if it's still in production. And I... So I understand if logistically getting him there is hard. But, like, a full scene, and it's actually him, would be nice. I did like what it did for Mick. Mick's character had some awesome growth this episode. Yeah. And um, and he, 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 he 
he got to take charge of everybody and says like, "We're doing this my way." Like, Chris yeah, that was, that was really good. Does does he say he doesn't <laughs> like something in this episode? Um, no, he gets the, <laughs> sn- the snart appearance is it's his hallucination and snarts taunting the entire episode. He's like. He's like, look at you, taking orders. He's like, you know, you're pounding up with this girl over here. He's like, you're not the Mick I knew. And he just keeps telling me, he's like, leave me alone. Yeah, and I really like that. Because in my head canon, the reason that he's still with the team is because Captain Gold sacrificed himself. Yes. That's the reason he's trying to be a hero. So it's interesting that his inner monologue is cold telling him that he shouldn't be doing this. Um... So it's kind of funny. Colt's sort of been the angel and the devil on his shoulder, like you said. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, um, but oh, if there's one thing, we... if there's something we all know, we all know is that Wentworth Miller can shoot the fuck out of scenery. Oh, oh yeah. Be- between, oh. No, between between That's him. Dude. And the villains, like, basically every villain in this episode, which is, like, every time they marched into a scene, like, it, they just dominated everything. Oh, yeah. Like, it's like they said, oh, let's get four people who can just chew uh, all just the scenery. Just eat scenery for breakfast. Yeah. And there was um, a callback to, uh... The, uh... To Invasion Part 2. Uh, yeah. On Arrow. That... That's something they did really good this week, actually, I thought, of addressing what happened the week before, which is something that, in the past, with other TV shows, doesn't always happen. Um, Like, when Buffy and Angel would cross over, they would address it. They would address that Buffy had just been there, or whatever, but it's something that just rarely ever happens, and it was really nice to get that. Um, But something I observed this episode was, um, and I think we've talked about this before, Damien Dark is so much better on on the show. Yeah, like, I feel like he has more per- he has more personality in the show. Yeah, and like I think we've learned we've learned more about him as an actual character than we did, and we learned that he had a wife and child in Era. Like we learned quite a bit about him, but we never really understood him. He was always kind of like at arm's length villain yeah. with no real character development other, until like the very last episode that he was in but I feel like this show is just handling it better I think um, Le- Legends has been doing it has been as far as like improving on what was done before I think Legends is standing out just so much more than the other shows are like they're taking their formula and they keep making it better week to week it, I I definitely have noticed that they um there is definitely a significant significant jump in quality since the first season. Yeah. Well, the first I, like, season the first season had that like unforgivable middle like just pit of uneventfulness and just uninspired boringness. boringness. Yeah, it was just really bad. I almost fell out of the show entirely, and yeah. like caught up real fast just because, and then all of a sudden, um, a giant Ray Palmer fighting a giant robot. I'm like, oh, where are you hiding this the whole time? Right. It felt like they were just saving their budget for that. Um, yeah. I would almost argue, and we're midway through, so I feel like we can make this declaration. I think Legends is the best of the year so far. As far I as, like, will absolutely agree, schedule. because and I am, like, the Bleeding Heart Flash fan of right. this show, probably. And, like, yeah. Flash Season 3 has had three episodes where I have really, like, fallen in love with. And yeah. everything else has been kind of, like, just there. Yeah. Like, I feel like this show and Supergirl, they definitely both get a, a split most improved award, um, I would say. And yeah. Again, like, if I had to rank it now, and we are halfway through, once again, so we can, I feel like we can say this. It, for me, it's Legends, Supergirl, maybe Arrow and Flash. I don't know. Maybe Arrow and Flash are tied for me. I'm not really sure. They kind of they kind of dip in and out kind of week to week. Yeah. 
Arrow certainly did this week, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um... No, you know, for me, any more any Reverse Flash is is good, and I like that we see that he's like outside of Tom Cavanaugh's you know rendition that you know Wells Abard, the Harrison Wells one, where he's kind of calm. Like standard Eobard Thawne is like a loud jerk. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, he's very chatty. Yeah. Um. I, I loved um I love the way the villains interact with each other. That's also. what else I was gonna talk about, is that they their their chemistry is awesome, especially between Dark and Thawne. Um Yeah. Especially right in the beginning when um when Dark's like, Okay, you wanna take this and he's like, I've got and then he speeds up and takes people out and goes comes back and goes, This <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, um, so, yeah and we and in Dark regards and to in regards to Thawn, we finally got the one thing we've been asking for for weeks. Ray Palmer shrunk. Yeah. In yeah. a moment that made me jump out of my seat, actually. I, 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 I whooped. Um, I was telling Hunter this before. Uh, the moment when he has Jax up against the wall and he's threatening to kill him. And Jax is like, whatever you're going to do, do it fast. And he's like, so eager to die. And then Adam just materializes in front of him and just knocks him on his ass. Yeah, that was really good. Um I'm trying to think what that reminds me of, but yeah, that was a really well played moment. I was like, Wait, is there going to be someone behind him? But yeah, the that was a really good hit, and uh, I love when uh, Amaya shoots him with that gun and his reaction. <laughs> he, just, he just flies in the air. He's like, <laughs> he, he, "Oh, I recognize you. I killed your idiot. Uh, I killed that idiot Rex Tyler and his evil." Ness just radiates out. Oh, of yeah, he was like, I killed that stupid JSA guy, Rex Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> and now you want me to do the same thing to you or something like that. It was just, it was so good. It was it was just the best. And I did laugh every time they shot him with that speedster gun because it wasn't anything subtle. Like, it was this big, giant, ridiculous blast of blue shit that sent him sailing through the air with, like, yeah. limbs flailing and he just lands on his face both times. <laughs> yeah. At first, so, when Amaya had it, had the gun, I thought it was Captain Cold's gun. It looked like Captain Cold's gun. It looked like they repurposed the prop. Yeah. I doubt that. It's, I doubt that that they did. Um, it, it, but yeah, it did have a it did have a muzzle similar to Captain Cold. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any other like high points from this episode, Alan? Anything? Uh, probably. A certain character making a return, or and the and the plan of the Legion of Doom. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, okay. Yeah. So we, the Spear of Destiny, which was was not something I was expecting. Wait, 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 wait. Yup. That's <laughs> what? the the, the plan Destiny. revealed for Legion of Doom is to obtain the Spear of Destiny and rewrite reality. Yep. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. So you that's makes and, me. Know what it makes me think? Of makes Hellboy? Me think, makes me think that Constantine might show up. Oh my god. Holy shit. I mean... Also, I think this is Thawne's out, as far as him trying to get away from his inevitable doom at the hands of fucking Eddie Thawne. I miss Eddie. That, that makes, would make sense. I think this is... Because yeah. he, he made a comment a few episodes back where he says, like, you know... Uh, how would you like another chance? Because he, he's like, I know how this all plans out for you, and I think he he referenced that he knows how it all pans out for him, and that he wants to have a chance to uh, change history. And I'm assuming he means without doing so through time travel, because we know how that we know how that goes. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> time yeah. race. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The the spear would allow him to it would allow him to complete his original plan of just eliminating Barry Allen from the timeline. Yeah. Uh, so, in the Flash. So this is two CW shows that right now that have magical objects that they need to attain, obtain. Yep. Well, I mean, Flash has already gotten the uh, the Philosopher's Stone, but I mean, like, yeah. there's two kind of, like, mystical kind of objects that are yeah. important to apply. And they're, they're treating magic 
far better than Arrow did in season four. Um, doing a much better job of explaining it and exploring it and treating it like it's something that's real and tangible and yeah. But they're also like giving it a scientific edge, which is really cool. I thought. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, anybody have any last last thoughts on Legends before we move to that? Not really. I I, just, I love this episode so much. I don't have much else to say about it. It isn't just good stuff. Yeah. Um. Uh, but... I like the accent of the person who came back after a lengthy sabbatical. Oh, oh but... fuck! We forgot. Yeah. Um. Uh, Rip Hunter returned real quick at the end. Oh yeah, um, he's a in, director in, in, in 1960s as a film director with an American accent. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. It's filming what? a filming a movie about himself. Filming a movie about Rip Hunter. My guess being that in the first Jonah Hex episode, he talks about um, losing himself in a time. You like when you stay in a time long enough, you begin to believe you are from that time. Oh, okay. And that's what I think has happened. He's, he has forgotten who Rip Hunter is to some degree. Like, he knows that he is Rip Hunter, but he does not realize that that is his life or that those are actual things that happened to him. So yeah. he thinks that he is a director who's from the 70s. Huh. 67. Yeah, I can't. I'm, I'm glad he's back. Um, yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, that, to... was the, that was the big thing. Yeah. Um,. I liked it. It was really well done. Um, yeah, I don't got any last thing. Well, I do have one thing. So, so every week, Katie Lotz shows that she should be the leader of this team. And uh, she just impresses me every single time. I'm like, oh, how can Katie Lotz make me love her as a lead and as a character again and again and again? And she just continues to be the best part of this show, I think. Like, everybody else is great individually, but she really pulls it together. And honestly, if they had said that Rip was never going to come back, I would have been completely fine with it. Um, no problem for me. So yeah, that's my final thought on Legends. Uh, who has a, who wants to kick us off on Flash? Oh, fuck yeah. Um, for one thing... We got more Jay Garrick than I ever thought we would, and he real Jay Garrick, and he's awesome. Yeah, he, he that whole episode was like it, we saw it. Okay, look, that whole episode just seemed like a very good like comic book story. Like, yes, it was it, like the most ground was covered in this episode, I think, than we've had all season. Yeah, yeah. it feels like. There, we saw so much, and was, I didn't want this episode to end. Like there was just, it just, it just kept throwing shit at me. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was a really good episode. It just, it just kept on giving more and more stuff that was really interesting, and I like the origin that they've set up. I like the concept, and they've, they've given us a mystery that we want, that I really want to solve, but I'm. Not not, it's not like the alchemy mystery where it's just going to bother me that we don't know the answer. We could never learn the actual identity of Savitar, and I'd be completely fine. Well, I think but his if you're dating if you're if they're implying that he is the first meta to ever gain speed, then he's probably thousands, if not millions, of years old. Um, then I don't think it matters who he is. As far as, like, in regards to, like, everybody else in the show, and even in that show's universe, like, it, it unless he's fucking Vandal Savage, which he's not, um, it doesn't matter. Doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter. What matters is that he's Savitar. Like, yeah. I think more likely he's an apocalypse kind of character, in a exactly. way. He, he's, uh, he's, he's Doomsday. He's, like... Yeah, yeah. Um, but he I, the, he I, the, He's Bane. He's the, he's the physical big bad. I yeah. think he could be a time traveler. And that's something that I I really do think is a possibility. He's a time traveler, 
or he's somebody who was taken out of his time. That's a possibility. And I even suggested in our chat, in our uh, mod chat, uh, I think he could be like a future Barry or something like that. I mean... I had that thought too. Was it Chris it, who like, said that it was he was Zoom from going back like that messing like messing yeah. around with the timeline? I I don't see how that's possible, and I think it's not likely. Like yeah, Chris, what a dumb theory. That's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> that's dumb. I hate you. It's not that crazy. No, but, it's um, not. Especially when you consider that the last time we saw Zoom, he was sucked into the time for at the Speed Force. And the pl- they throw Savitar's little like you know uh, his little uh, anchor object into the Speed Force, right? And also, <laughs> he's not actually the god of the Speed Force, as we kind of. He's a no. He's a self-proclaimed god of motion. Like, um, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I guess the. I'm not sure if Savitar is an actual Hindu god, but going to go on the Google machine right now and find out. He probably um, is. I think that um, he's like... Well, we know he has he's history like with Barry. Yeah. Right? And he knows what happens to... We got prophecies everywhere. Yes. One of them we kind of got a glimpse of, but that's a, obviously a tease. I don't think they're going to... No, I think they're going to... Yeah, that's going to be... I think they're going to... Swap, do a swap out with that. Yeah, I do have a guess as to how it gets out of the Speed Force, though, and that is that Zoom is involved, and Hunter Zolomon uh, being okay, sort of takes him out of the Speed Force and unleashes him. Probably, I don't, I don't know, but that that's the most likely way, and it's how you would reintroduce Black Flash into the show. He shows up and talks to Barry and tells him what he's done just so he can gloat while still being a time wraith. I think that'd be interesting. Be awesome. cool. Well, there, like I said, I said last week, I believe, that time wraiths are in the Season 3 trailer. We've I mean, yet to see them show up yet. They were midway through. Which I like... think, back to Legends real quick, uh, towards the end of it, Thawn kept checking his watch. And he had alarms going off. And uh, he kept saying, we have to go. And they're like, in a rush to get out of it? Like, and they, they made a comment about him being in a rush. I think he's dodging time rates. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I imagine that he's always dodging time rates. Yeah. With the way that he travels. He's just, he's just better at it than Barry. <laughs> yeah. Um, we finally saw uh, the trickster in his Joker getup. Oh, yeah. was... I love that shit. It's fucking cool. Like, it it it, it seems like there it's a it's a nod almost. That oh he's god, just yeah. In Earth and and that Earth, he's just he's the Joker. <laughs> it's fucking cool. Yeah, and it explains that rumor that we talked about earlier on about yeah. him being in a Joker like costume. And I like that it was still actually like the, the trickster, it's just that. That trickster looks a lot like the Joker. Um, I love his, yeah. his his stupidly lovable um, line, his intro line. Like I said, if they cooperated, I'd let them live, but I tricked them. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "That's so me." Um, yeah. what else happened in that episode? Uh... I watched this episode twice in a row. By the way, that's how much I liked it. Um. Um, we got a lot of this. We got we got basically the alchemy mystery is just fucking wrapped up. Like there's no more to it. Um, yeah, alchemy is a uh, is a alchemy is a dummy. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, um, as I put in the in the chat, it's like Clarion the Witch Boy and his cat. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I'm. I think I'm actually finally sold on Savitar because I was a little bit tenuous. I wasn't really sure about how I liked him as a villain, and again, I'm still going to beat this drum. I don't want any more speedsters. No, uh, I'm good. Unless, unless you're going to make Thawne um, like a big bad again, no more new speedsters, because yeah. I've been down this road before. But um, I, I like Savitar because he's the Goro is, of the Speed Force. He is. No, this is like, it's, yeah, he's the Shao Kahn of, um, yeah, he, of speedster he's, villains. He's fucking, 
He's just this fucking warlord who's he's just like big and You're scary. Too fast. I gotta, and like, I gotta shut yeah. you down. Yeah, yeah, that's exa- yeah. He, he's Barry has become fast enough for Savitar is like a. Hey. Yeah. You're stepping on my uh, turf, boy. I'm gonna come and knock you down a peg, boy. Yeah. I got angry at Cisco though. That is something that happened for like a second. I was, I mean, yeah, I was, yeah. I thought they were gonna do it again. I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" But then Cisco, he uh, he shows that he he truly deserves to be there, and he he closes the box. Um, this is a weird week because like, there were hallucinations, probably. In every single show, assuming that the end of Arrow was a hallucination. Um, ah. I really hope it is. But yeah, like, it's really weird. Um, and if, for them all to do hallucinations at once. Which I guess is fine if that's how they want to do it. But we've talked before about, about how we don't really like when they repeat themselves, even with a week in between them. Yeah. This. This is a little bit cutting it close, I think. But I liked how they handled it, and there's a story reason for Dante to be a vision. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, um, okay, so I have in my notes, stop taking your fucking mask off, which is, uh, Barry needs to stop giving his identity to people. Yeah, he's Seriously? got the worst guarded secret, secret identity since, like, fucking, um, the blur. Spider-Man, maybe. I mean, he's very, he's, he's extremely uh, trusting when it comes to just, like, ripping his mask off and showing people. He's like, I need you to trust me. <laughs> Rips his mask off. He basically showed Savitar. <laughs> like, yeah. He, um, um, I mean, he showed Eddie. Uh, I guess, like, Iris had to know eventually. I mean, Joe knew first. Cisco knew first. Um, yeah, I mean, that's fine, though, that he Here's shows his friends and family. Like, it's like... To me, that's okay. Yeah, but okay. he showed Patty Snippet. <laughs> yeah, like, that's they were weird. having relationship problems. And he showed Patty, Patty Snippet his identity. Well, no, he, well, he didn't weird. show her. He, he he doesn't directly show her. Right. He, but, basically, he refuses to show her, and then she just leaves, and he, he loses her forever, basically. Yeah, but she figures it out. Yeah, she knows, and he's just like, Nuh-uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> No! <laughs> You're the Flash. <laughs> and then last season, he, he showed Doc, Dr. Light, or not Dr. Light, the or Oh, the one version of Dr. chick. Uh, Linda Park. Yeah, it's Linda yeah. Park. And, you know, the last time they dated was, like, over a year ago. And there was no, there was no reason to do that. You could have figured out another way to convince her. Uh, I don't know. Too many people know his identity. Two new people that could very easily be tortured or whatever, you know. Yeah, Peter Parker would have a lot to say about this. No, no, yeah, he would he have would. a lot to say about this. Clark Kent. Jeez, Clark Kent. Well, at least Clark, Clark Kent Kent's like, there's... look at me. I've been pulling this off for ge- generations, and all it takes is a pair of glasses. You fool. No, I'm talking about Smallville. Actually, he he also uh, yeah. raises his voice an octave and has like wears clothes ten like three times too big for him. Yeah, and he also vibrates his face, also. It's just, yeah. No, I'm talking about all uh, the times his secret got 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 loose on Smallville. Like when they yeah, when Chloe I saw him catch a car with his bare hands. Yeah. Wait, they actually did that? Yeah. They actually killed somebody off before they did that. Like, so the number of people that knew did change like, drastically. Like, okay. Oh, uh, first, first knows. He t- when he told Pete, uh, Pete got interrogated by uh, the government and had to move right. move away. I guarantee you that will happen to Patty Spivett or Linda Park at some point. Guarantee it. Um, but yeah, it's, I say Savitar needs. Um, Savitar seems to know a lot about them to begin with, so it probably wouldn't be too out of a possibility for him to figure out who Linda and Patty are. Right. He identified <laughs> Wells as the fake Wells, which I thought was very interesting. Everything with Wells and uh, Wally was pretty good in this episode, too. I liked, like, I think everyone had um, standout moments. And I think HR has finally found, like, a role. Um, I, I fucking love HR. This is my favorite. Me too. I think this I, is my I, favorite yes. I mean, not Wells. Why did I say Thon? But Wells. Yeah. Um, I'm starting to, he's starting to 
to grow on me finally. Um, well, because he, 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 kind of, he entered like a like an idiot. He seemed like a guy who didn't really who was all talk and and no uh, basically nothing else. Right. He seemed like uh, comic oh, relief. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Um, and now he's become kind of this. Uh, he's become very sagely, and he's talking sense to Joe of all people. Yeah. I did like that. Um, I did like that the fight with Joe and Wally was over very quickly. It wasn't this long, drawn out thing. You mean it wasn't um, like it wasn't a four week long period where uh, he was just being nasty to everyone around him, including Joe. Yeah. Um, and being and oh. being really, really, really petty. Uh, yeah. yeah, I I really like uh, the Joe stuff with um, what's her face, the girl. Who he, like, oh. totally takes out with at the end. The, uh, I can't Yeah. And I love... <laughs> I love the eggnog. <laughs> Both of our grandfathers... Oh, were our grandmas were alcoholics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I like... I, like um, I love the ending Christmas scene. I thought that, um... Again, I... One of the big reasons I love this show is because I think the family element is so strong. And, um... To close out, like, what could have been a super downer episode with just everyone kind of hanging out at Christmas um, and then Barry and uh, Iris moving in together, I thought was just awesome. Yeah. And I like the the Flash does this every year. They always do a sort of Christmassy thing at the end. Yeah. And it's always very heartwarming um, because Arrow never does that and Legends hasn't done it yet. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. that bit, and I even love that at the end, Tom Felton does actually show up, and uh, he does. Yeah, I like, Julian, try. I'm totally sold on Julian now. I think he's awesome, and I, I hope he doesn't either return to being a villain or die. Because I hope he, I still hope he's kind of a dick, though. <laughs> he is very like, amusing. I will say, like, him just being an asshole. To he Barry is, a, is he like is, my favorite. He is so prickly. He's just so good at it. Like, I just don't want him to stop. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, when you when you spend uh, a decade playing uh, Malfoy, yeah, yeah, you're you're gonna get good at being a shithead. Yeah, it's like a clown for ten years every single day. You just yeah, you're gonna know. You gotta do it. Um, any like final thoughts on the Flash or uh, rants anybody wants to go? on? I think this season is going to end with every speedster available taking on Savitar. Yeah. Well, there are uh, there there are photos of Accelerated Man, who's the Flash of Earth nineteen. What? Wait, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Accelerated Man. He's That's... basically like he looks like he's got the Sp- the Spider Man goggles from Homecoming. Not Homecoming. Uh, Civil War. A red. Huh. A red uh, um, cowl and uh, cloth covering his his uh, mouth, and he's the, the f- Flash of Earth nineteen, as seen in the uh, multiver- multiversity written by Graham Morrison. Huh. Interesting. Um, oh yeah, they're, they're really doing deep cuts. Like, yeah, but. I a... thought Peekaboo was a deep cut, and now this. So there is also uh, footage, uh, or not footage, a uh, photo of Jesse Quick, uh, Barry, Wally, and Vibe on on set. Oh shit! Yeah, this is what I was hoping they I, would I do. Did... Zoom, like I was hoping they would do a big like team up kind of a uh, beatdown on them, but I guess it works better with Savitar. Yeah, yeah, and also. You can only do the end of last season one so many times before it becomes oh, doing this again. Um, yeah, that sound that all sounds fun. The future, guys, the future. Um, oh, we had like a flash thing. Alan wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um. Carlos Valdez, a.k.a. Petty Cisco, or San Francisco. God damn it. <laughs> uh, it's the worst. 
he'll be he's gonna get some help with his powers with for, and the, he's, the person who's gonna help him is Gypsy, a character who was introduced in the same work or Vibe and Gypsy were introduced in the same issue, Just League Annual Volume Two. Hmm. Huh. She, Interesting. When when it comes to her powers, she has the ability to cast illusions. And she can also project frightening images from the minds of op- opponents. So, so she's basically less. She's less scary, Scarlet Witch. Less OP, Scarlet, Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I'm always looking forward to new characters who are going to do things in the show. Yeah. So. I mean, I I don't recall much about Gypsy. I, I don't I know. I've seen a picture of her. I don't know a damn it. thing about Gypsy, so I will yeah, wait and I've, see. I've never heard of this character. But I'm excited because whenever they do a character I've never heard of, they seem to do it right. So, Well, she well, was... Yeah. She had the bad luck to be a part of the Just League Detroit. <laughs> that just... That sounds awful. Yeah, God, I, I would not... Let me tell you something. The amount of obscure comic book knowledge I have attained just through you people is obnoxious. Actually, out of all the Just League rosters, the the ones that are the most that are appearing (coughs) regularly right now are is Just League Detroit team. Huh? That's weird. That's a deep cut. I want a Justice League Detroit versus Great Lakes of Avengers comic. <laughs> Dude. Just because that the silly yeah. thing ever. Uh, no, no, I want I want Justice League Detroit against uh, Alpha Flight. Oh. Alpha Flight's cool, though. <laughs> yeah. Like, I had Alpha would Flight. just be putting Alpha Flight. Alpha Flight is fucking cool. I will go to bat for Alpha Flight. Like, is there a Canadian version of the Justice League? Well, Alpha Flight versus Justice League United, actually. Would yeah. Be the, uh, That'd be cool. They were called Justice League Canada in the book, but... Justice League Canada. Yeah. <laughs> That's who you J- want. JLC, eh? There's a bunch of dudes in tights apologizing. <laughs> <laughs> well... Sorry, 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 I punched you there. So we only have, like, watch. one Canadian member, so it would really just be her saying sorry. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah. It really wasn't a Justice League can They really should have, like, come up with new Canadian heroes, but I understand comics. You have to use existing people. Um, yes. All right, let's get to Arrow. Yeah. Uh, let's, rip this fucking, uh, let's rip this fucking Band-Aid off. Okay, I'm just gonna start from the end. Um, yeah, that's just, I. I don't know. I I barely remember this episode. I, mean, I just kind of the betrayal okay, so, and the reveal. The two things I took away from this. So the center of the episode is fine. It's a it's a good mystery, and it starts to answer some questions, which is nice. I know more about Prometheus than I did before. That's good. There's some um, good Mister Terrific character stuff in that too. Yeah, the, yeah, the stuff with him and his husband is really good. So, a little backstory. Um, before this show, before we started doing this, I was going to stop watching Arrow. Um, yeah, you were. That's you were, to know. You were almost done. I was done. I was I was so done. Uh, after the Bee Lady episode, after Cupid, after a long run of just terrible, shitty episodes. Um in like the last out of the last six episodes, there's like two well, of you can actually blame walking. someone for Cupid. You can blame Andrew Kreisberg. He created her, and Green Arrow right. and Black Canary. Her first appearance, I actually like. It's that episode from last season that I utterly despise. Um, and it just there was just a run. That. And the one that I really don't like is the one that they kill off Laurel. Because up until they do it, the entire episode is terrible. The entire thing is just a lot of bad Mr. X and them trying to make it seem like she won't die. Even though no, she's going to die. She's definitely the one dead. 
Um, and when they, they finally kill her off, I was like, oh, well, why don't you do this midway through the season? Or any other time before you really made some of the dumbest episodes on the planet Earth. Episodes that are so there to make us continue the mystery of the grave. And here's the thing. The grave mystery from last season was actually a really good mystery. I was wondering who was in the grave for a very long time. So, that being said, the show lost me. It really did. I was so done with it, I was ready to not watch again. This podcast starts, I'm like, okay, Laurel's gone. Switching out the team. New team members, new actors, new characters. Well, half new actors. But two people that we already know, but hey, they're not bad parts of the show. The moment I saw Laurel in this episode, <laughs> it felt like nine episodes of good writing, of good character development, of really good work were just thrown out the window. Just dumped in the shitter. It's like, oh, you like this that we were doing? You like that we were rebuilding the show and that we were kind of bringing ourselves back? We're just going to burn it all. We're just going to piss all over it. <laughs> I, was, I was so angry. I I'd like to thank the producers and writers of Arrow for letting me hear Arlen get worked up for the first time ever. Um, I shouted, fuck you. <laughs> I shouted <laughs> the TV. Fuck you. I, you even wrote I, it down I, your I, notes. <laughs> yeah, you wrote it down. Fuck you. Why did you really this? write it down? Yeah, yeah his he, notes say, his notes, just, it's, just a, it's just a picture of fuck you. <laughs> I, just, I was so livid, so angry. And, and my brother, my brother watches all of these shows with me. And he's younger and he he's far more forgiving of these shows. And uh, he said, well, what, 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 it's just a dream, and there's nothing wrong. Laurel, Laurel's great. I just stared at him for a solid minute, and just the entire time I'm saying, no. No. Fuck them. Fuck my, the problem, my, problem, my problem isn't really, like, with Laurel itself, because, like, I'm not as turned off by Laurel as some people are. However, I get it. Comic book deaths are usually ambiguous, and you're always like, well, they're not really dead, because, you know, they're, they're the building blew up and we didn't see a body, or, you know, something. There's it, there's no body, you know, there's it's they're not dead. This was right. an embolism. She yeah. died in a hospital bed connected to machines that are designed to let people know when she's dead. Yeah. She, what were her last words, by the way? In a Grey's Anatomy she died episode. in a hospital <laughs> She's like, dead. Yeah, my roommates are chiming in. Uh, and I like told my brother that, and he said, "Well, Flashpoint, Flashpoint doesn't no, don't do no. an embolism." <laughs> <laughs> also, Jesus if, Christ. and if it was a Flashpoint thing, Ollie wouldn't have been all okay. He wouldn't have been taken aback with the fact that she was alive, and we wouldn't have had to have this episode okay. in the invasion thing where he gets some actual closure with her on this life he could have had with her, and then he leaves this this part of his marriage. That's all completely undone. Provided she's back for real. Yeah. And fair enough, it could all be a dream. It could, all, it could be just a vision in his head. And if that's the case, she's not really there, I'll continue watching the show if the next episode is good. If the one when they come back is really good, they explain her being a vision in a way that unless makes sense. unless unless it is also could also be uh, Earth Two, um, uh, Black Siren. Yes, that's another that's another possibility. It could so, be Black Siren, and they have said that she's coming back. Here's yeah. how they fix this episode. All right, next episode episode starts. We see Laurel, right? She and immediately behind, the face. From behind, no, from behind Laurel stops out, steps out Doctor Destiny, and it's all a dream. <laughs> yeah, bam! Just hire me, hire yeah. me, CW. I mean, hire all of us, please. Yeah. Um, 
We'll Please. write. We'll you write know, your this, seasons. Yeah. <laughs> we'll. Or just hire us to look at your scripts ahead of time and say, um, no. This is very, this is very counterproductive because I'll immediately just ask for a reverse Flash spinoff and then <laughs> we're fired. So we want to do a reverse Flash show. Get out. <laughs> Matt Letcher's like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Come um, on, I need the work. And, and Matt Letcher plays all the leads. <laughs> yes, yes, please. Um, remember the remember the remember that one episode of Doctor Who where the master turns himself into everybody else or everybody else into him? Do that. Uh, no. not, like not the not the master race. The reverse flash. race. The reverse race. <laughs> you Barthon steals everyone's body. <laughs> I would hate it just as much as I do in that Doctor <laughs> Who Like I would suddenly hate reverse. Flash. Um, technically, yeah. the master. Well, technically, in the master turned, turned took over Hank Kensho's body. Yeah. Um. I, I've, uh, I'm just yeah, going through my notes. There were other things. Yeah. The Artemis betrayal was the one other thing I remember. Well, uh, the, the, the Billy confirmation of the betrayal, anyway. Yeah. Uh, John Junior is adorable. I guess. Uh, I also wrote my notes. Fuck you, Evelyn. Um, fuck you so hard. Um, <laughs> um, I, under- I understand how that sounded, how I said it. Um, a Wonderful Life. I thought that was a nice little yeah. joke. Um, uh, and I had to explain it to my brother. How Wait, did you watch brother? A Wonderful Life? Oh, he's, he's 16, but he's never seen A Wonderful Life. Um, so I did. Well, about I it. mean, that's a bad movie. So I wow. said it right there on the Phantom Zone. Hot take. What did, what did you just say? <laughs> I don't like. It. Okay, let me elaborate real quick. Tangent. Um, I was in creative writing class in high school, oh. and we had to watch "It's a Wonderful Life." How long is "It's a Wonderful Life"? What is it, like ninety minutes? It's like two hours. Okay, two hours. You should be able to watch a two-hour movie in high school in roughly two to three days. It took us nine. <laughs> it took us nine days, a little over a week, to watch a two-hour movie because my teacher would not stop pausing the movie and explain to us, like a bunch of brainless baboons, every instance of symbolism and metaphors. Jeez. Oh, okay. Christ. Yeah. So I... it's not inherently a bad movie, but don't ever fucking ask me to watch that film again. Uh, okay, that's different. I understand. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I hate no it. No man with it. friends is a failure. Um. Yeah, I completely understand that part. That's a. He that's paused fair. the movie the, way the you first watch... ten seconds of the movie and said, "Look, a twinkling star." I was like, "Well, I hate this." Yeah, I would. I would too. Um. Oh, I. I hate Malone. Uh, that's Lucy's boyfriend. So, really, wasn't that sad when he died? Just because I don't. About the character. He died. Wow, I must I have. He was. I must have. He slept. was. Yeah, Prometheus. Uh, up. Ba- uh, put a thing on over his mouth and uh, put him in the, in the costume. Yeah, uh, I did like the flashbacks of this episode a lot. Uh, that stuff was really good. Um, and there's even a flashback where uh, Oliver, when he's still the hood, um, like shows up after an explosion and I thought oh, that's right out of year one like that is that is just he, he if he if he had said you have eaten well and all that big speech or whatever then it, that's the only it could have been more year one um, I, I also like uh, like season one Felicity and stuff like that um, that was fun uh Arlen, there's something you're forgetting. What? That the amazing part where uh, the bo- the way the bodies were set up as they were in okay. in, in the in season, as they were in the flashbacks. Yeah, I did like that. I did like uh, the attention to detail that Prometheus took. Um, again, I thought they did a lot for Prometheus this episode. It's just. I 
to really think about it because of the ending. Um, it, yeah, this episode is a fine episode. As mid-season finales go, it's nothing special, but it's not terrible. So that's good. I, I, I feel like mid-season finales never have the pressure of a series finale. Um, so they rarely ever, I'd say, put as much effort into it. I think we are kind of spoiled with Flash a lot of the time. Because yeah. I, I feel like they do pull out the stops for the mid-season. Like, they just, they just go for it. Um, and then they treat it like it's a real season finale, uh, which is nice. Yeah, I think Legends is picking up that uh, that concept, too. Yeah. Um, any sort of last thoughts on any of this? Uh, it's going it... to... I'm I'm severely disheartened. <laughs> like, <laughs> I Arrow. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it. I, I mean, the jur- I mean, the jury's still out as to whether what you know what this reveal means. But um, yeah. At face value, uh, I mean, it's fucking stupid. Yeah. I'm really, I'm not looking forward to the mid-season premiere um, at all. Uh, like. Yeah, it it just it feels wrong, you know, it, like uh, like, uh, there's a sense of betrayal that I rarely ever feel from a TV show, um, and uh, feeling it hard. At this point, I feel like it's just done to um, like how I, how do I phrase this? I think it's feel it's done to fuck with all the the, the ship fans who. Like to romanticize Ollie with Felicity, Ollie with Laurel. And I feel like this is just done to just like just pull their strings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm all for that, but like, <laughs> but it's cheap. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, I get it. It's CW. I don't care about romance. I don't like. Like, if you're gonna do a good job, then great. Uh, but like. None of these shows have ever done a good job of romance. Eh, Barry and Alice, Barry and Iris now is is. I mean, yeah, it was kind of weird in the beginning. So, yeah, and yeah. I, I did like him and Patty. I thought him and Patty were, were damn like, adorable. Yeah, I thought that stuff was okay. Um, I, I thought that the rumors that Patty and Zoom were all hilarious at the time. Um, I'm really <laughs> that, that wasn't of, wait before. what? <laughs> there were people who legit thought that Patty was Zoom, and part of me was like. <laughs> That would be the craziest thing, and I would love it <laughs> if Zoom took his mask off and he had just like a, and he had long blonde hair. Little little Patty Spivet. Yeah, I, and it would, it would be so funny because she is so sweet in those episodes. She's also like I, I'm uh, like, uh, what's his face? Uh, the actor I can't remember his name. Uh, the guy who plays Hunter Zolomon is a very like long dude. He's very tall. Uh, Teddy like, Sears. Teddy Sears, yeah, and like to see that mask come off and have like little like itty bitty Patty Spivet just sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> she she like she like shrinks a little. And I would, she's, on, she's on stilts. Now I'm, like. now I'm imagining her imagining her saying the line, Well this complicates things. <laughs> yeah, that's a... um yeah. That was good. That was uh that was interesting. All right, I feel like we're spinning our wheels. That's well. I mean, we started talking about Boy Meets World last night. That's our that was our cue to tie things up. Um, should we do plugs? plugs Follow me on the- Twitter or don't at Western Commander. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Daffinaport. You can follow me on Twitter at a a haro, or you can get news and reviews and other shiz from uh, at Los Haro on all social media platforms. Don't forget to go to the fan, the fan zone group uh, page or group on Facebook. Just type in the fan zone. I'm pretty sure we're still the only fan zone group on Facebook. 
I mean, maybe the other podcast, just Phantom Zone, uh, maybe they have a group, but it's probably not as cool as ours. Well, so. fuck them. Yeah, they can go. I dare them. I dare them to come email us. Yeah, come into our Facebook group, yeah. you bunch of posers. Yeah, posers. talking about horror movies and your, your, your old sci-fi. Whatever it is you people talk about, because I have no idea who you are, and this thread is meaningless. I'll edit you with articles about what would happen if, we, uh, if a nuke goes What would happen is if, super, yeah, if, a, if a nuclear bomb went off in Superman's butthole. <laughs> By the way, that article, that article is in Phantom Zone right now. So. Yeah, I yep. posted it there. Yeah. Not, not written by us, but please read it. To quote Jake, uh, yeah, I wish I to quote Jake Browning, I am drunk, and this is exactly what I need right now. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody.